Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show and I thought I'd start today's episode with sharing my little model of the course hair. This is, of course is the F4U and I love that little inverted seagull shaped wing. Very fun to make and I bought a whole bunch more of these to give out for uh, gifts as part of the Seiko Saturday giveaways. Wonderful little objet d'art to have in your desk, uh, in your man cave or war room or whatever you, <laughs> you choose to call it. Uh, I absolutely adore mine. I've got to say I love that chrome finish. Um, it makes it look remarkably elegant. Uh, yeah, really, really cool. It took me about an hour or so to build. Um, a lot more tricky than, than I had anticipated. You do re require a little bit of dexterity, but very fun and relaxing on a Sunday afternoon. Anyway, without further ado, let's roll the intro and get on with today's episode. <laughs> guys and welcome to the show today a very special video because I'm gonna be discussing five things I love and loathe about the Seiko Saab 033 uh, you guys know uh, I've had this watch for it's over two years now um, but although technically it's in my wife's collection now because as you guys know from my last state of the collection I was trying to consolidate I couldn't bring myself to sell it and considering also my wife it's become my wife's everyday watch, um, so I think it was a good way, a bit cheeky, but it was a good way of, you know, I get, I get to still wear it occasionally, obviously. Anyway, so let's get into it. Oh, by the way, I've got to do wristwatch check. I'm wearing my little jelly. This is the, uh, the jellyfish uh, swatch watch I picked up, I think just, was it Christmas? Was it before Christmas? I, I can't remember, but a very fun watch I bought used. It's a mid-90s piece. Uh, and I snapped it up and you can see why it's called, called the jellyfish pretty obvious absolutely fantastic I love this little uh, swatch uh, there's so many great uh, classic swatches this is a 34 millimeter uh, the only thing I don't like about it is it's incredibly loud tick because obviously it's a quartz watch but very very fun a uh, bit of pizzazz and I love it. It reminds me of childhood, so um, wristwatch check done. Okay, now before I get into discussing uh, my five loves about this watch, I should give a little background. This, is, this watch is pretty special because it opened my eyes to the JDMs, the Japanese domestic market or the Japanese domestic models. I had only really experienced their tool watches, the, the SKXs, the Flightmaster, so it was a new segment of Seiko's uh, range that I had not yet experienced and really opened my eyes. I've owned it for quite a long time considering, <laughs> considering the rate I buy and sell, but anyway, so very special watch um, and it has achieved a, a bit of a cult status. Uh, especially online, I think it's it's a very popular watch. One of my most popular reviews. Although I I, I really can't bring myself to watch it. I'll add the link up there. I can't bring myself to watch it. My old old reviews. Yeah, how how YouTube has changed. But anyway, um, yeah, I better get on with this. So my five loves. Well, let's start with value for money. Unbelievable value for money. What this packs in for? I think they're going. From about three to four hundred dollars currently, it is absolutely worth every penny, without a doubt. Fantastic movement. It's an automatic. Its looks, its finishing, the quality. Is it still the best automatic 
wristwatch under $500, probably so. Uh, I think its value is unbeatable for everything you, you're getting. Seiko's at this price range, there's a lot of kind of corners cut. I don't feel there's any corners cut with this watch. It offers, I think, the most value for $500. You could, well, not even $500, under $500 you can find on the market. I really, I really do think that. Um, so value for money is my number one love. Number two, and it's its styling. It's classic, timeless, elegant, very understated, very tastefully done. It has a, a slow release charm about it, okay? And what I mean by that, it takes a while to, for you to realize all the little careful nuances in its design from the faceted dolphin hands to that little uh, second minute track running around the outside in the, in the chapter ring, the negative display on the date, the applied logo, uh, that, that beautiful engraved signed S on the crown. And I also really love that little second hand. It reminds me of a sewing needle. It's just very endearing. The little layering in its finishes, it has this kind of Corvetto style stepped case which is just beautiful curve to it. It's very, very unique um, that it has so much detail, but yet looks deceptively simple. The proportions, 38 millimeters size, they just hit a home run. It pleases so many wrists and yet has a look to it, um, an aesthetic that looks far more expensive than it is, not to mention the display back so you can actually enjoy the movement. It's Stylistically, it's beautiful. Un capo lavoro, um, the Saab f will forever be a, a, a classic, I think. Okay, so that was number two. Number three, it's a solid, solid performer. We have in there, of course, the 6R15, which is a derivative of the 7S26 that we all know and love, well, I know and love very, very well. You've got the upgrades with the hacking, the manual wind, that incredible 50 hour power reserve, it's 100 meters uh, water resistant, it even has the deer shock, uh, what else, bi-directional winding, anti-magnetic protection, I forget the, the um, what is it, amperes, but I forget, someone please do fill me in in the, in the uh, comments, but it is incredibly robust, a solid, solid performer. I get about plus seven seconds. The power reserve is so much that you wind, you wind it up on a Friday, you leave it, wear something else on the weekend, and most likely it's still going by Monday. Very, very difficult to, to beat. The quick set, of course, what else? Uh, the loom even, the loom is pretty outstanding. We got that Seiko loom, although it's small, it works very, very well, and I love the way they've, they have it double applied at the uh, 12 o'clock, so you always, easily see what you know which way is 12 in the dark it has the slower um, vibrations per hour so less friction on the on the moving parts and therefore it can go you know 10 years without a service just very very difficult to beat and again it goes back to its value for money incredible value for money okay so that was number three number four and it's got to be the quality of the piece there's no denying that this is a step up from uh, Seiko's international releases. If you look at every part of this watch, the amazing amount of detail, uh, the care that's gone into the finishing, the transitions of the finishing, the sharpness of the edges, the uh, quality of the materials from the sapphire glass, the solid end links, even the clasp, uh, is really well done, the double button deployment class, although I, I wear it mostly on straps. It's a beautifully made timepiece. Whether that's because it's made in Japan, who knows? I mean, there's a lot of debate about that online. I'm not gonna get into that one. Uh, it would be interesting to, to compare similar watches, you know, at this price range, but the quality, it's got to be my fourth point. It, it's unmistakable, the feel of it, it's incredibly solid feeling. You, you, you immediately feel that this is a, a significant step up. Okay, number five, it's an absolute strap monster. Although I've got it on this genuine crocodile emerald green strap, it's become kind of the go-to strap choice for this watch. You can pop it on a NATO, you can pop it on a pearl on, you can pop it on virtually any strap. So it's one of the most versatile, and that's all down to its 
classic style. It's just, it's fantastic. Now we've mentioned versatility in terms of its design and, and, and pairing it with straps, but uh, it's versatility in terms of uh, it's wet, how you wear it. You could almost argue this is the perfect all round watch. It's thin enough to wear with a, a suit. If you, if you put it on a, a, a lovely luxury Cro genuine crocodile strap or something like a lizard grain or something a bit more formal as a dress watch. Uh, you could wear it equally as a sporty kind of watch on the weekend on a NATO or Perlon. Also the, the, the comfort of the watch makes it incredibly versatile um, in terms of wrist, the curvature of that case, it just hugs the wrist like no other. I, 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 what can I say? It's a very, very versatile piece in many, many ways, uh, and incredibly comfortable. It's difficult not to fall in love with it, it really is. So, um, let's go on to negatives, and this was desperately, frightfully hard because I've never had such a difficult time coming up with negatives for this watch, or for a watch. If it was a thousand dollars, it would be a lot easier to critique because then you'd start saying, well, I'd prefer a little bit more you know, uh, high grade movement perhaps, blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, it's very difficult to, to, to hate on a watch costing this little. But there is one big issue I have with this watch, and that is why do the Japanese, and this is my number one hate, probably my only true hate, because the others are mild annoyances at best. Why do the Japanese keep all the best stuff for themselves. Why are the JDMs significantly better than the international releases? It leaves a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth as if they're keeping the best stuff for themselves. Why? Why not put this for international release? And yes, you know, Long Island watches have since, uh, I think for about a year now, started stocking them. Uh, many, many places now stock these and they are a lot easier to get. When I bu bought this uh, maybe this should be my second hate when I bought this two years ago. I had to order it from Japan. I don't think actually there were any sellers, uh, American-based sellers, selling the JDMs at that time. Well, nowadays it's different. And all, actually, I've got to be honest, ordering from Japan is very, very easy. They're very professional it's, and it's remarkably quick, even to here uh, on the East Coast in New York. So yeah, that's my number one hate. Why? Why is that? If somebody knows, please do share in the comments or if you have a theory, perhaps. Okay, second hate of this watch. It makes me question spending more money on watches. It makes me really kind of feel almost guilty about spending any more than the price of this watch on any other watch. It's, it's almost as if it's a kind of second quartz crisis. You could call it a an automatic crisis, if you will, makes me think that I could quite easily just be happy with Seiko's. I really could. I really, really could. It's only because of my lust and my, the, the, the charm of more expensive pieces that, that I can't stop myself. I, you know, I'm, I'm weak when it comes to my, my controlling my lust for watches. but. Um, yeah, it, it, it does make me question. And again, this is not really a hate. I'm having a hard time. Okay, we'll try this. Mild annoyances, mild annoyances. Number three, I would have preferred a higher vibrations. Now, as you know, this 6R15 operates at 21,600 vibrations an hour. So there is a little bit of kind of, you know, it's not as smooth buttery. Well, even 28,800 is not butter smooth. For such a refined watch, it would have been nice to have a smoother sweep, but you know, I can't really, it's not really a hate because at the end of the day, uh, it's part and parcel of this movement and part of the reason why it's just so robust. Is that a hate? Uh, probably not. Uh, okay, so that was number, what was that? Number three, number four. I would have loved to see more decoration and the movement, but again, you know, it has a bit of a Cote de Genève finishing on the rotor. Some very nice beveled edges. There is finishing there, but I would have loved to see, and I would be prepared to pay significantly more for, you know, the full works, uh, pelage work, blue screws, 
You know, I would love to see that. A really tarted up movement. Would it make sense on the 6R15? Probably not, but it would have been nice to see. Uh, maybe a special edition, perhaps. Seiko, if you're watching, please. Again, three to four hundred dollars. You can't expect blued screws and all the rest of it. So, very, very forgivable. Okay, so that was number four. Uh, number five, and this is just me, perhaps. Uh, but I would love to have drilled lug holes, like on my little Henry, my Tudor Day Day. Because it's such a strap monster, I would love to have it with drilled lug holes, just so I can make it easier to swap out straps. Would it have uh, maybe sacrificed a little bit of that elegance and refinement? Yeah, maybe, but I think it could have got away with it. But not really, I hate. I, I give up. It's so funny because it's so easy to come up with five things I hate about the Rolex Submariner. That's one of my favorite all-time watches. Oh, even winding it now, it's oh, the little Savi. And I'm so glad I've, I've, I've still, well, technically it's not mine anymore, but. Okay, guys, so that was really my best attempt at five hate. I think I failed miserably there. But guys, if you can think of any hates for this watch please do share it down below and especially if you are a Saab owner it uh, doesn't matter if it's the 033 or the 35 with that beautiful cream dial thoughts queries questions opinions all the rest of it as always i love hearing your feedback thank you very very much for watching please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful and as always guys i will catch you in the next one okay ciao